Hi everyone, so today's video is all about my guinea pig books. Now I do get quite a lot of questions, especially when I do kind of shed tours and people ask me what the books are that they see on the shelf and what I recommend and things and I thought this would be an interesting video to do. I personally like a book for my guinea pigs for example if I'm looking at breeds or an illness or symptoms or something like that I like to go to a book rather than on the internet even though the internet's massively useful books are just nice and I like them on display in the shed and also if the internet's ever down and one of my guinea pigs was ill I'd be stuck so it's nice to have a book so today I thought I'd show you the books I have and I rec pretty much recommend all of these books I did do a video series a few years ago on all the guinea pig books I had some of them were rubbish some of them were really good but I basically only have the really really good ones now and the ones I use quite frequent frequently so the first one I have here is guinea pigs understanding and caring for your pet this is written by dr. Anne McBride and it's a very good book this is probably one of the oldest ones I have it pretty much just skims over everything it's in detail but it's not hugely in detail like some of my more specific books this kind of covers all areas so it's obviously not going to be in detail completely on every area but it's a nice book it goes over kind of colors and markings coat vari varieties what is a guinea pig and you know all of the basic pieces of information you would probably need to know before owning a guinea pig so this is definitely a, an all-rounder and it's definitely a good book for those of you who haven't owned guinea pigs before but who are planning to own them I really like it and the information's all correct yeah, there's a lot of books you can find especially the older books that were written kind of in the 90s and 80s that have got a lot of incorrect information you know show small small housing say wrong things about guinea pigs like for example suggesting using muesli food and things like that whereas this one's pretty correct and I really recommend it. This is another book that kind of goes over a little bit about everything. This is another one that I'd recommend for new guinea pig owners. It's probably one of my favourites actually because it does skim over everything like the other book but it's a little bit more in detail and it's a nice book. It's called The Mini Encyclopedia of Guinea Pigs. It does have pictures in, of cages in there but it's pretty correct information and it's like I've said fairly in detail. So it's a nice book. I do like this one and it's by Myra Mahoney. It just kind of goes over a little bit of everything. So understanding your guinea pig, let's flick a bit, it's got things on um, showing guinea pigs, feeding your guinea pig, so it goes over the kind of mixes and it says all about this mix here, it's not actually a muesli mix, it goes over what's in it here, so it's got things like grasses and stuff and it says here, do not use hamster mixes as peanuts and sunflower seeds are not suitable or rabbit mixes and ETC so it's a very good book what I like about it is it goes through all in the food section it goes through veg that is suitable and unsuitable and, and wild plants as well which is really good it also while I'm on this page it shows hutches like this but what it actually recommends is that you make your own larger hutches and larger rooms and it goes into detail about how larger space spaces are much more beneficial for guinea pigs so it shows you what you should and shouldn't do kind of thing same here so it's a nice little book and goes fairly in detail i really like it and illnesses and things obviously if you're looking for a book just on sicknesses we'll go through my other books in a minute but this is good for before you're a guinea pig owner so here's another book that has bits and bobs of information this is probably the most correct out of the three I've just shown you. This is probably the most correct because it's coming directly from a very well experienced guinea pig owner, as are the others, but they've kind of been co-written and things, whereas this has been done by the one person who's done a selection of guinea pig books and not just the kind of one encyclopedia of guinea pigs. So it's all like opinionated, she goes on to talk about what she suggests you do and don't do again it, she talks about space and food correct and incorrect things so it's really nice she gives examples of different things so i really like this book and what i like about it is it's hardback it's always nice to have a hardback book 
because you find they kind of keep longer and if they look nicer I just find a couple of examples of things in the book and these are all I believe her guinea pigs the person that's written this so it's Julie Man Mankini I think and they're all her own pictures I'm sure they are I'm sure I've read somewhere in this book that they are her own pictures so it goes right into detail you see there's a lot of text in this book and a little nice book to have all three of the ones I've shown you so far I definitely recommend but this one has probably the most the best information coming from someone personally rather than facts it's personal information so this one's a pretty good one so then here I have the proper care of guinea pigs by Peter Gurney now Peter Gurney is or was he unfortunately passed away he was a huge um, he had a huge amount of knowledge on guinea pigs and what's different about his books is actually they were written quite a long time ago they were written in the 90s and usually a pet book or a guinea pig book specifically coming from that year or those years would most likely be incorrect because there was less information then you weren't really using the internet back then you know not really many people had computers there wasn't as much information out there and books were just basic guinea pigs were known as kind of basic animals that you didn't need to put a lot of time and money into whereas he was a huge enthusiast he strongly believed that guinea pigs needed large spaces he took all of his time and effort to learn more about them and learn about what suited them best so what's great about his books are they are old but they are so up to date because he was so up to date with his knowledge so this one's a nice little one again it's kind of like the other three where it's a kind of a bit about everything and these are all his own pictures like with the other book these are his own guinea pigs and this is him here so I'll find a couple of pages for you and this one is called the proper care of guinea pigs if I haven't already said and he had a homemade cage you can see it's kind of like the cages we see now on the internet or like my cage with a glass front and everything whereas back then you would not really see anyone with that kind of thing you'd mostly see people with tiny hutches not really think too much about guinea pig care and you know specific things they needed but he was really in detail with this so I really like this book you know bathing them safely we've got pregnancy and how to care for them when they're ill just bits and bobs a real big overview of guinea pig owning so here is another peter gurney book this is my favorite peter gurney book i love it it's one of my absolute favorites it's called piggy potions so for those of you who are very experienced or fairly experienced this is a great one to add to your collection because it covers kind of sicknesses and illnesses common ones that you can treat with home remedies if you are unable to get to your vet quickly and I really like it it's a really nice book you can get it fairly cheap because it's an old book and this is where what I mean with him being so up to date because all of the things in here are things we see and um, being used a lot now and it probably originated a lot from his research because he researched so much so I keep pictures and things in here and I also have leaflets on measurements and things of, of medications I have but this is my absolute favourite and the illustrations in it are just adorable so it's extremely well detailed so for example it's all in alphabetical order here is appetite so if your guinea pig had a lack of appetite you'd come to this page you'd re read through which would help you figure out what it may be causing that and then there's kind of dosages and what recommendations of what will encourage them to regain their appetite so it's that kind of example so let's turn to another page so I can show you something else so lip sores so again you read through see what may have caused it kind of figure that out from your knowledge of your guinea pig then it'll tell you how to help soothe that and improve that condition there's mouth and gullet, there's paralysis, poisoning, pregnancy, skin infestation. So it goes over all the basic, most common illnesses that you will find with guinea pigs. And wind, I really like it. It's really easy to use, really uh, cost effective to purchase. 
and really up to date. I really like it. It's also got on the index all of the illnesses and also medications. So, for example, if you've got a medication such as infant calpol and you're thinking how could I use that it'll all be in here so it's really nice probably one of my most recommended books one of my definite favorites I also have this other book by Peter Gurney this is what's my guinea pig a guide to guinea pig breeds by Peter Gurney this is one of my oldest books and it really helped me when I began owning guinea pigs because I it helped me to learn about the various breeds and things it's especially especially great book for those of you who either have a herd or a variety of guinea pigs or maybe you know you're going to have a variety of guinea pigs and are interested in knowing what breed they are. Obviously, if you're not, then it's not the book for you. But I personally find it really interesting to look through, especially with having, you know, Peruvians, Shelties, Abyssinians, Americans, Dutch. You know, it's good to have an idea of what breed they are, where they've come from. So I really like this book. It's very in detail. He even goes in the back, he goes into detail of either breeds that aren't technically breeds or very rare breeds such as alpacas, dalmatians, harlequins, magpies so on and it on the the breeds kind of for example the shelter here it goes into such detail about that certain breed of guinea pig and you know their traits and everything and very very in detail and I think as I've said in a few of the other books they are his own guinea pig pictures. Too. I then have another illness related book because illnesses scare me and I want to make sure I'm always prepared you've seen how much stuff I've got in my first aid kit it's the same with books I mean they're a crucial part of my first aid kit so I do have three books aimed at illnesses because I like to refer not just to one but to a few of them and especially like I say if the internet was down and I can't count on things like that anyway I wouldn't trust where it's come from whereas these are thoroughly researched and everything so I kind of trust them more so I like to have a few so I can refer to more than one. So this one is called Diseases of Domestic Guinea Pigs. It's aimed at people who are trained to be veterinary nurses or vets. So it's a very in detailed, correct, good book. I would say though it's harder to read than the Peter Gurney one because obviously it's just complete text. So it's harder to find what you're looking for. But again, it's correct. It has all the correct information because it's aimed at people who are training to be professionals. So it's a nice one to have. It does have nice diagrams in it that do help with various conditions and things. So I do like this one. It was fairly expensive for what it is, but it's definitely something that I would recommend having. The Piggy Potions is definitely more for, I'd say, a new guinea pig owner because it's a little bit more easier to read, easier to go off, and the illustrations help with what you're looking for. But I would definitely recommend having more than one guinea pig book in general and also more than one guinea pig book on illnesses and things if you prefer books to the internet which I personally recommend because like I say they've been thoroughly researched but this is a nice little one to have as well as the piggy potions one. Finally my last book is the official guide to guinea pig diagnostics, surgery, medication and welfare. Again this is aimed at people who are becoming prof professionals, so veterinary nurses and vets and it's by the British, British Association of Rodentologists. It's a fantastic book, definitely want to recommend but very expensive. I mean the Piggy Potions one does pretty much the same job with all the common diseases and illnesses but this one's thoroughly detailed extremely up to date and really good just very expensive and i've seen actually quite a lot of guinea pig owners online and everything owning this at the moment which is probably where i heard it from a while back i think i can't remember but if you search on the forums and things pretty much all guinea pig owners have this now it's a fantastic book and one i would highly recommend if you're willing to put that much money into a book obviously it's worth having but then you it's not worth having instead of a vet money for vet bills if you know what i mean it's better off to go to a vet with that money if you have the choice of either but you can definitely put some pennies aside to save for this it's just a nice book it's very in detail so if i go through it you can pretty much find any symptom in this and pretty much know the medication and cure for it or how to aid that pretty quickly just by having a quick flick through this so for example treatment of dental problems I love anything with a diagram because it because it's such a huge help to know what you're looking for and what it looks like so we've got treatment of dental problems digestive problems ear problems and all that one issue I I found with this book is I thought it'd be much higher quality for the price it's literally just a binded 
printed off book so it's paper I would have hoped that it would have been a little bit more professionally made than just a binded book for the price of it so that's kind of annoying and I tend to keep it in a wallet like this to keep it safe because can you imagine how easily this would get wrecked and how disappointed you'd be after spending all that money on a paper book when it gets wrecked so easily but it's definitely worth being worth it for me either way that's just one little annoying thing about it I really like it so in detail it goes through every single problem you can think of pretty much so it's a fantastic book and if you can afford to put some money aside to get it I definitely recommend it so uh, those are all of the guinea pig related books I have in my shed and I use very regularly and I mean I've been collecting these for over six or seven years now so I mean you don't obviously there isn't a load of books here but they're fairly expensive a couple of them so you don't need to have them all you just need a few if I was to recommend a couple to have I would say obviously this one's very expensive but I highly recommend it but for an affordable price I would say go for the Peter Gurney books the piggy potions and the proper care of guinea pigs because they're two fantastic ones to have and are very in inexpensive so I hope you've enjoyed this video remember to give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and comment down below what books you have or which one you think you might purchase thanks again for watching and I'll see you very soon bye everyone